Today we're going to take a look at the 2021 Honda Rebel 300. We'll talk about where this 300cc class cruiser fits into Honda's current motorcycle lineup. We'll also go over what changed for 2021 and started up too so you can hear what it sounds like. But first, if you guys find any info in this video helpful or you just like Hondas in general and want to show your support for the time spent making this video, please take a second and hit the like button for YouTube's algorithm. Hitting the like button and commenting below helps more than you guys know behind the scenes with growing this channel. And to show my appreciation, here's a picture of some cute pups living their best life in a Honda Silverwing. Now where does the Rebel fit in Honda's current motorcycle lineup? Well, if we're talking about the 2021 model year, then you only have the Rebel 300 at $45.99, followed up by its big brother, the Rebel 500 at $62.99, and then new for 2021, the Rebel 1100 at $92.99. Now when it comes to these other models, it looks like Honda is skipping the 2021 model year. So all the information mentioned is for the 2020 model year. And at the time of making this video, you'll still be able to find them at your local dealer. These are a little more of your typical cruiser bikes, so to say. And one thing to keep in mind when it comes to certain features that you would see on other models these models haven't been updated in over 10 years. We'll start off with the Shadow Aero 750 at $76.99, followed up by the very similar, but with different styling, Shadow Phantom 750 at $78.99. And then last but not least, we have the Honda Fury, a chopper styled cruiser that comes in at $10.599. Honda used to have a pretty large cruiser model lineup, but as times have changed and segment popularity has shifted, so has Honda's model options, and that leaves us with the most anemic offering they've had in quite a while. Honda is trying to pump some new excitement into this part of the market though with the new Rebel models, so it'll be interesting to see what their next step is, and I'll have a new 2022 update soon on those cruisers that I think a lot of you are going to like. I want to take a quick second and say thank you to Southern Honda Power Sports for opening their doors to me and allowing me to come pick through their inventory for these videos. They are a massive Honda Power Sports dealer here in Chattanooga, Tennessee with tons of inventory from new Hondas to used Harleys and everything in between that they sell to people from all over the USA. So check out the link in the description below and head over to their website to see if they can save you some money on your next toy. And now that we've got that out of the way, let's jump into a little more info on the Rebel 300. First up, we'll touch on a little bit of history behind the Rebel. A lot of you are probably familiar with the Rebel 250. It ran pretty much unchanged from the 1980s up until 2017, when Honda finally decided to bring it into the 21st century, while also bumping up its engine size. Now that's not to forget that Honda did toy around with the Rebel 450 in 1986 and 87, but they quickly dropped it and then waited 30 years to try again, and this time around, they hit a home run. The Rebel 300 and Rebel 500 models were introduced in 2017 to replace the old 250, and then we fast forward to 2020 and Honda decided to update the model even more with some new upgrades. Now we won't dive deep into those changes from 2020 in this video because it'll be another 20 minute video by itself, but we'll touch on some of the highlights here and there. And if you want the nitty gritty info, I'll have a link below explaining more. And now we're all caught up on how we ended up here at the 2021 Rebel 300. Now let's talk about some numbers and model options when it comes to the Rebel 300. With the Rebel 300, you have two model options. You can get the standard Rebel 300 with an MSRP of $45.99, or you can opt for Honda's ABS, their anti-lock braking system, and that'll add an additional $300, bringing you up to $48.99. And what kind of color options do you have when choosing a Rebel 300? It's not good, but it could be worse, so we'll look at the positive side of things. You don't just have one color option for 2021, like some models, but you have a whopping two color options to choose from oh my God. Wow. which is down from the three you had last year i know i know guys it's going to be easy to get overloaded with all these options 
you know, if it was just a case of the whole Rona situation, then I could cut Honda some slack, but we've talked about the color option problem for quite some time now, and I won't bore you guys any more about it in this video, but having a popular model and only having one or two color options is crazy to me. But what do you guys think about it though? Am I griping about nothing? Is it just me? But let's get back on topic. Those two color options are called pearl blue and then matte gray metallic. Now thankfully, choosing between your brakes doesn't narrow down those color options like it does on some models. As an example, if you want a 2022 Grom with ABS, then your original four colors to choose from just shrunk down to one, blue. And speaking of ABS, that's one thing that brings in a difference between the two Rebel 300 models. When it comes to their weight, the standard Rebel 300 has a curb weight of 364 pounds, and then you add six pounds for ABS, bringing it up to 370 pounds. Next up, we're going to jump into the chassis and suspension. To support the Rebel's low slung look, its tubular steel frame holds the engine in three places and is designed to be as narrow as possible around the rider's inseam. The frame design also allows Honda to use the same frame for both the 300 and the 500 Rebel models, keeping costs down. That's why they feel practically the same other than the 44 pound weight difference you'll notice between the two. The Rebel has 41 millimeter telescopic front forks with 4.8 inches of travel and out back you have a nitrogen filled twin shock setup with 3.8 inches of travel and preload adjustability. Now the last time we saw suspension upgrades on the Rebel was in 2020 where Honda changed up the fork spring rates and oil quantities for a more compliant dampening and an overall smoother ride. The Rebel has one of the lowest seat heights out there thanks to its frame design and it comes in at 27.2 inches opening the door for a lot of vertically challenged people. Yes, touching the ground isn't a necessity when riding, but it makes a lot of people more comfortable with both feet touching the ground. Pair that up with a 30 degree fork angle and a 58.7 inch wheelbase and it makes for a very balanced and neutral steering feel out of this bike. And while we're on the topic of steering, you've got a wide 130, 90, 16 tire up front to help with the bobber styling and a 150, 80, 16 out back. And those tires are wrapped around 16 inch cast aluminum wheels that are stopped by a single 296 millimeter hydraulic disc brake with a single 240 millimeter disc in the rear. And like we mentioned earlier, ABS is available as an option. Now, how about fuel capacity? It's not the largest in the world at only 2.95 gallons, including a 0.6 gallon reserve, but with Honda's 78 mile per gallon rating, it means you'll be able to click off a little over 200 miles a tank before you're pushing it. And that brings us to the engine and drivetrain next. The Rebel 300 has a fuel injected 286 cc liquid cooled 20 degree single cylinder four stroke dual overhead cam engine with four valves per cylinder that you'll also find in the CRF 300L and CBR 300R models. When it comes to performance numbers, it's pushing out 27.4 horsepower and 19.9 foot-pounds of torque. It has a 76 by 63 millimeter bore and stroke with a 10 7 to 1 compression ratio and it's packing a six-speed transmission with a slipper assist clutch that was added last year. Now I could ramble on for about 20 minutes when it comes to some of the technical internal information about this engine, but the vast majority of you aren't here for that. So I'll quickly mention that I've got a link below for those of you that would like to see that. Next up, we'll touch on maintenance, which is one of the key areas Honda focused on when developing this engine so that it could be used in multiple markets around the world. When it comes to recommended service intervals, your first service is due at 600 miles, but you don't have to worry about a valve inspection driving up the cost like most models, so it'll be relatively cheap. And then you have oil changes every 8,000 miles with valve inspections coming up every 16,000 miles. And next up, we'll jump around the bike and talk about a few different things before we get into starting it up. The Honda is finally getting on board with changing over their models to LEDs and the Rebel 300 is no exception with it having an LED headlight, tail light, turn signals, and the license plate light. 
You also have the classically shaped gauge setup with an LCD screen to display your gear position indicator, fuel consumption, speedometer, odometer, and all of that fun stuff. And another thing, when most are going plastic, you have a steel rear fender mounted to the aluminum rear subframe on the Rebel 300, which also provides support for the accessory passenger seat. It's weird. American Honda doesn't put the passenger seat on as standard equipment and sells it to you as an accessory, but Honda of Europe does the opposite. They sell it with it mounted on the bike, and then in their marketing material, they mention how you can easily remove it to customize the bike. It's pretty wild how things are done differently from one country to the next. And that ties us into the next thing, accessories. Honda does make a few official OEM accessories for the Rebel, from simple things like a cover for it, front fork covers, a headlight cowl, different seats, saddlebags, a 12 volt power outlet, and I'll have a link down below where you can check out more information on these OEM accessories and check out some aftermarket options too. And now we'll start the Rebel 300 up and let you guys hear what it sounds like and then we'll come back for a few more things. And that's the 2021 Honda Rebel 300. What do you guys think about it? What do you think Honda needs to change on this model to make it as close to perfect as possible? And also, what do you guys think about the $45.99 price point on these when it comes to what you're getting for your money? But that's a wrap for this one, guys. Thanks again for all of the support lately, guys. I really, really appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next one.